Giving Back Africa is a, uh, an NGO, which is a nonprofit 501c3 corporation that we formed several years ago because of our uh, desire to help educate uh, young people in Congo. Our mission is to invest in Congolese young people and their education in order to help them realize their own dreams. There are several problems with a standard type of aid. Uh, in general, when aid goes into countries, it's just sort of lopped in as money and certain things get done, but then uh, they don't uh, perpetuate themselves. Some people have um, called them UFOs, unfinished objects, um, scattered all over the countryside. Um, typically, uh, humanitarian aid or, or projects are implemented for three to five years. Um, lots of money is put up, up front. Um, buildings are built, roads are built. Um, with very little consideration about what happens after five years. So when we uh, thought about doing projects in Congo, it became clear that communication and other problems were uh, somewhat insurmountable trying to run a project from here. And so we thought, why not involve Congolese institutions as well as Congolese students uh, and let them run the projects that we're trying to uh, that we're trying to support. We believe that a commitment to Congo is like a lifetime, okay? So it's not three to five years. We're there for the long haul. A short-term project in Congo is 10 years. Um, you can't even hope to have any kind of sustainability um, before 10 years at this point. It's very important that rather than invest in projects directly ourselves, how much better it is to invest in Congolese young people and let them use their own intelligence and skills to uh, address the needs that they find in their own communities. And so all of our projects which we support um, are Congolese conceived, Congolese driven, and we're training students to help develop plans to uh, completely run an organization, whether it be a nonprofit organization, whether it be a corporation, whether it be an orphanage. The two Giving Back to Africa scholars are exceptional. We just came back from Congo, and the highlight, of course, was meeting Masani Machi and Malivo Kagaba. These are the first two scholars that GBA has um, has accepted. Masani is um, a master's student in public law. He is um, very interested in the HIV AIDS uh, epidemic, has been involved in NGOs in Congo. He's from the Equator province of Congo, which is one of the poorest areas in the country. Mali Vokagaba is a master's student in rural economic development. He is himself an orphan. Both of his parents have died, and he uh, has come from the eastern Congo near the Ituri. The impetus for him to be a GBA scholar is, in fact, to return to this very unstable, um, potentially dangerous area to make a difference in his communities. We hope that the training of these students will allow them to um, stay within Congo and be job creators and we hope that we're setting up the type of education that Congolese institutions and corporations will continue to support in the future because of the education of these students. I asked them what giving back meant to them and I thought it was extraordinary that they both used the same word to describe giving back and that was restoration. To give back is to restore, which I think is a, such a hopeful um, vision for the future. One of the projects we went to visit was a Congolese orphanage that was founded by um, a Congolese and is now all Congolese managed and run. Paid is an orphanage. Right now there are about 30 street children um, who live there. We um, have help to support paid, for example. We've helped to pay the teachers who haven't been paid for months and months. We've helped to buy food for the orphans. We've helped to um, buy clothing uh, and other support. The two scholars, we hope, will be going to paid for to apply the theoretical courses they're learning um, in a service learning uh, model. This is the time for Congo. Congo is at a crossroads. It has um, 
finally uh, been uh, released from the dictatorship of Mobutu Sese Seko, who uh, ruined this country uh, for over 30 years. Uh, there are many reasons for optimism. The main reason is just the huge amount of human capital uh, that's there. And just looking into the eyes and talking with uh, people throughout the country, uh, you have to be optimistic given the resiliency of these people. We believe that the young Congolese students at the Protestant University of Congo have so much to say. The people we've talked with, the uh, two scholars, they have so much to offer. There is no doubt in my mind that now is the time for Congo. There's also optimism given the recent elections. Uh, the elections in Congo were really the first true free elections that Congo's ever had. And to see the uh, uh, people stand in line overnight or for hours or days at polling stations to hear people sleeping outside just to vote for the first time. So this is a critical moment in Congo, not only because of the elections. There's been a recent peace accord that has been signed in the East where a significant um, conflict has continued to rage. And it is a critical time because the Congolese people themselves are ready for a change and are ready to invest in their future. You ever lose faith in the resiliency of the human spirit, you need to travel to Congo. They're sick and tired of being um, manipulated and exploited, and they're ready, and so are we.